Greetings and welcome to the channel. And today we're going to be looking at WebRTC in Google Developer Platform with Angular as the front end and Node.js as the back end. Please like, share, and subscribe, and most importantly, reach out to me in the comments section for any assistance when you're doing these labs. Also, a link to the lab will be posted in the video description as well as a link to social media in the video description. All right, so WebRTC is another badge in our Google Developer Platform, amazing stuff that I was able to learn. So ultimately, WebRTC turns your laptop, it turns your web apps, they turn them into full-blown cellular devices in terms of FaceTime, in terms of texting communication, that and the third. And this lab, we're gonna take a look at how we go about getting it done. So what you wanna do is you want to start the app, Angular app, right, by downloading it through this link and then installing the dependencies and running it like so, as well as you want to set up the Node.js backend. Usually I do Python on this channel, but it's actually the backend is actually very simple. So I'm just going to leave as a challenge to set that up in Python and definitely make pull requests on GitHub so I can see that work or leave links in the comment section, right? So first things first, we want to stream from the webcam and the basis of WebRTC is to start out with the feature and this is what i recommend the future of our web design right you want when we want to provide an api it shouldn't be built in with all the extra specifications right it should provide that singular feature of what we're trying to achieve and web rtc is simply once again making sure that we end up having a video we end up the allowing our laptops or allowing the web app to work as a to work as a cell phone or a feature of the web app to work as a cell phone right so before we continue i just wanted to a little aside on object destructuring right so i'm going to copy and paste this to see it better like so and you're kind of seeing that we have a massive object destruction taking place and right you're taking advantage of some es6 um we had some es6 um concepts right because with web rtc right there's going to be a lot that is involved right into making sure that that rtc peer connection or it's really you know the connections that takes place they're known as rtc peers um to make sure that they work right we're going to need a lot of we're going to need a lot of data held in variables and then we're going to need a lot of methods coming back right so that we can so as we start to build out the feature in our application, right, there's going to be, right, there's going to be increasing complexity, right? And we don't, and for these methods that we return here, like these are all methods, we, we kind of want to see them once in our code. We don't want them in our code. We want them to stay in our library and we want to see their code once in that library. Right. However, you know, for all the different um, elements that they need to build, right, it will be for a beginning developer, they would just try to say, all right, let me put them directly into the space where the feature is going to be built. And that's unwise. So what we want to go ahead and do is you want to take advantage of this ES6 um, concepts that we're using here, as well as object um, the structure. And if you're using and if you're using ES5, just simply you know, just like that, right? Just like so, right? But ES6, you definitely want to take advantage of that. And it's 2021, we're moving towards that. So that was just a side on that. When you're dealing with a lot of setup, right? And you have a library of functions that actually lies on this amount of data, if you want to refactor that into object destructuring. All right, so next we want to go ahead up and set up our event listeners, right? Right, and now we want to provide right uh, event listeners right to start the app right as well as to make a call, as well as to make a call to the remote peer which is on the on the same tab as the local connection. Right, and hang up once done. Right, so if you head back over to the front end, you want to start the session. Right, right there. All right, so there's the video and I was using some CSS effects 
in order to get this thing to to get this to work properly. Now, um, we want to go ahead and call like so, right? We're able to call the remote peer as so, right? And this is happening on the same on the same tab. However, the point for WebRTC is to provide the feature, and then you continue right to make it happen. You're to provide a server, try to provide a service in order to get uh, what one web tab on one computer to connect to the same app on another computer, right? And now definitely the most important part is how we get the webcam, right? And we want to take advantage of navigator media devices, get user media. And this is very, very important, right? This is very like the most important part of this lab. If you don't walk away with anything, walk away with this, this is how we gain access to the webcam, all right? And if you want to provide for that, once you have that webcam access, right, we are getting a media stream here and we're going to attach it to the local video, which is which is that element, which is that video element that we see here, right? With this media stream, right? And instead of having an empty video pane, right, we're going to get that media stream. All right, so that's just the overview of really how media streams work with uh, RTC. All right, so next we're going to look at the RTC data channel, right? And then this is just like reiterating, want to provide that feature and then you build on top of it. So what we're having is that we're just using WebRTC once to get to send data, any form of data, right? There's media here and now we're going to be able to send text, right? And um, very, it's very simple, right? Very simple what's going on here. Definitely want to take a look at create connection before we continue, right? So, Create connection, right? And then control J, open this up, right? And then we see that what we provide for is we need our RTC peer connections, right? We don't have any serve, we don't have any servers yet, right? So this is going to be like a self-to-self -self app, right? But we need that RTC peer. And what's and what happens when we have RTC peer is that we use ICE. Say for example, Right, when we want to connect to another computer um, to another um, instance, right, from another computer, what we have is ICE. And, and the reason that we use ICE is because when there's communication going on and it's not through HTTPS, right, and um, with RTCs using a different communication protocol, we need ICE to really try to get past those, any, those um, to get past the firewall because most of these apps when you start, what's happening is that the computer that the end user is using is probably behind a firewall or they're probably behind a corporate firewall or the router is giving them issues that prevents that protocol from being used, right? So to bypass this, right, we need to set up, we need to take advantage of the ICE framework, right? As you can see here in this code, right? And what ICE is, it's going to be able to use stun and turn and turn um, protocols in order to try to make that connection, right? And it's going to take advantage of those turn relay servers in order, once it's able to find a connection, right? To make sure that that connection is taking the best path between each other, that there's less halves when it comes to that data transfer. All right, so this is an overview and definitely, um, more resources will be in the resources tab to understand, right? So the, uh, let us go ahead and look at the app. So we're gonna start up the app like so. We're gonna type in some text and we're going to send it over to the other peer, right? More messages, right? You see it on the other side, right? This is really just not a copy and paste, right? This is actually done through RTC data channel. You wanna stop. Right, we see it stops like so. All right, so the final part of the lab, we're actually going to start to try to connect um, what we know, what we have with RTC, with RTC, and we're going to try to set up um, communication between these two different tabs. So this is obviously not going to be self to self anymore, right? This is going to take place as this. Uh, 
all the all real communication as we see in the world. All right. So what we have is what we want to take a look at is at index.js and what we need for WebRTC to work is a signaling service, right? So we need a signaling client on the front end and a signaling um, back end coming from the server so that the two so that the two sessions right can find each other and join the same room right and this is what in here we're using the socket io library kind of go ahead and take advantage of that but the most important things here really to get this to work is that like i said the two clients find the same room right so socket on creator join the socket's able to find Right. Once these two clients request to the socket server, right, they provided a room to join. And now that RTC connection is able to start with the data provided with the metadata provided from the socket server. All right. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to initialize the objects like so. Right. And then another important thing is how we go ahead and initialize the client socket, right? Um, right. And now that which it script is coming from, oh, right. And now the script is coming as a require statement from socket.io. I wanted to show the adapter. I wanted to show where the adapter came from because the adapter ultimately determines what type of browser we're working with to properly set up on um, the set up the data channel, but that's okay. I'll just leave that out. Um, and definitely we're just taking advantage of that require. So usually, you know, we're in Angular, what we have this ES6 imports, as you can see at the top of this directive, but here I just wanted to use require so that like you could just see how I'm able to set up the socket. Right, so this is actually actually returns a function, right? And then we want to provide the URL for the server, as you can see here, which is running on port 88, like so. Right, and now we're able, and now we have these sockets connected. So that's how we're able to connect sockets, right, to sell by signaling service, right? And we're able to solve the infrastructure from the server side. So we're going to be able to see the signaling infrastructure from the client side. First things first, we want to go ahead and set up the functionality, the event logic. And now what we want to provide for is now we want to be able to create a room, right? We want to have a means for the two sessions to identify each other to the server and the and the server to provide a room for them based on that random token. So that's all just providing is a random token, right? And now what we want to do is we want to actually provide for the client side, just us the client side set up for a socket. So we could go ahead and speak to the server. And right, the three important things that we need, right? We need to be able to set, we be need to say that we have a room ready. We need to know that that's a case from the server, right? We need to be able to know that we're able to join that room. Or there's a room already available that we're able to join, or if that room is full and we're going to have to wait for another room like so. All right, and now what we want to go ahead and do is we want to be able to join a room like so, right? We sent it over to the SOC as we saw on the server, Creator join that actually manages the, um, the steps in order for the two clients to find each other, right? And provide a room for each, right? So now what we have in the third tab, right? We have another video and we want another communication. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna copy this exact um, URL, right? Open up the new tab like so, scroll over to the bottom and now, we, even though it doesn't seem to be the case, right, there is actually an RTC peer connection using, using that signaling service, right, in order to, for communication to take place. So now they notice each other, as you can see, these buttons are activated. So I'm gonna go ahead and snap, right, and I send like so, right? So this photo gets sent over 
to the first end user if you're going to see in our incoming photos, right? Right, so I'm going to take a bunch of photos um, or snap and send. Snap and send. And then have another little, oh, snap and send. And then all the way, snap and send my phone. Now we can see in our, you can see in our front end all the different photos that end up getting sent, right? So it could definitely make a pretty cool application and a pretty cool project out of this. So that is all on WebRTC. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Most importantly, reach out to me in the comments section for any assistance on the lab. A link to the lab is all social media will be posted in the video description.